So let's welcome Simon and Julius to the stage. <laughs> Okay, yeah, welcome. Um, this is our talk about what's new with Maki, what happened in the last year. Let's dive in. So the first thing is the community has been growing, like usage of Maki has been going up. We see that in the number of issues, the number of pull requests, uh, the number of stars on the GitHub repo, uh, the number of uh, readers on, in the docs, the gap there being the new docs. and. <laughs> um, yeah, so things are looking good. The uh, citations, I'm very happy to see uh, the things that people are doing with Maki. This is just some random papers um, that have come in the last couple of weeks that looked nice, um, where people have been using some features of Maki. And uh, you can see the citation graph, and really a lot of people are, are using this now to generate real results, which makes me really happy, or us really happy. Um, yeah, so let's see what the developments actually were in the last year that stood out. Um, so yeah, we have new docs now using the Documenter WordPress um, generator, which is nice because uh, it's really not a good use of our time to write HTML code, I think, um, as we had to do before. And so now we have this nice system. I think uh, it's much more usable and better to search uh, than it was before. Then uh, new is the plot attribute validation. So uh, we finally fixed this problem that keyword arguments uh, that were wrong were silently swallowed by Maki. So now you get nicer errors that point you to like what's going on and reminds you what the options are that you have. Um, so I think this overall will probably save a couple 10,000 hours or so of <laughs> scientist time. Um, right, then we have uh, high DPI support. Uh, so there was this problem that um, GLMaki could only generate uh, pixels at a density of one, basically, like one per pixel per unit, or what, how we call it. Uh, and this was bad on macOS with a high resolution screen, and it was also bad on low resolution screens. So nicely, we have uh, now the ability to scale the, uh, the displays to the screens that they are displayed on. And you can also much better generate high quality bitmaps with GLMaki now that you can use in uh, journals when you want, I don't know, 600 DPI or 1,000 or whatever. So that all works now. Then we made a, a data shader module after the nice talk by the data shader guy at the MakiCon last year. Um, well, <laughs> never ask again. Sorry, do you even see this? Oh, okay. There was some pop-up on my screen. Um, yeah, so data shader is nice if you want to um, interactively look at very large point clouds that are uh, dynamically aggregated into heat maps. Um, and you can see it's smooth for uh, millions of points. It's a uh, bit janky for billions of points, but I think that's still OK. <laughs> and there's probably still optimization potential there. So if you're motivated, you can dive into the source and help us out. And with that, I'll give to uh, Hey. Um. I will be presenting quite a few changes that uh, come from me and Frederick, actually. So for, um, one big issue was uh, that we're, uh, we're converting everything to Float32 in the backend because I thought it was a good idea back in the days because everything needs to run on the GPU. You're doing graphics, so you don't need a high precision for that. But yeah, people have been complaining that if you just put float 64 in uh, the plot and actually need the precision, you will get a faulty plot without an any error. And Frederick, with a lot of work, fixed this now, and we are uh, internally normalizing uh, the data based on the zoom. Um, so this works now. Um, I spent a lot of time uh, on uh, making access converts for categorical support because they kind of need to be saving global state um, in the access uh, to add new categories or to normalize with the um, dates. And um, because this is really went into the internals, um, it was quite a refactor. Um, Frederick added uh, quite a lot of um, nice lighting support uh, to GLMaki, um, which you can see there. So now you can have multiple lights um, with new uh, and better defaults. and cleaned up the whole kind of lighting um, thing. And also, um, int uh, Frederick introduced some new voxel plot type where you can um, 
plot uh, billions of little cubes <laughs> um, that can be used for uh, some serious big data um, data visualizations or for some games, I guess, like Minecraft. And um, we finally have line styles uh, in WebGL Marquee, which was a big missing thing, and also uh, caps and joins. Um, okay, oh damn. <laughs> um, and future developments. So one of the biggest things I want for the future in Marquee is um, stable funding. So um, I can actually uh, sleep at night <laughs> and I'm kind of all in with Marky by now. Um, so I really want to grow it. And I really want to work on it and I want more people to work on it. And I can already um, half announce that we got some nice funding pro possibly coming in, which will also help us employ Frederick. And we will be able to um, concentrate on finally improving documentations, testings, and uh, make everything more stable. And a uh, project to improve WebGL Marquee. Okay, and I think time's up, so I'll just show the image of uh, the Elder of Graphics PR. <laughs> 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 you can think about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So. Are there any questions? So thank you once again, a big round of applause.